the Center for the American Woman in Politics at Rutgers University has been studying that very question for the last couple of decades. Um, how do women differ? Well, women tend to be more liberal. They are disproportionately democratic, but they also tend to be more liberal, regardless of their party identification, um, than their male counterparts. Um, they are also more likely to be transa transformational leaders instead of transactional leaders, meaning that um, it's easier, they, they get more buy-in for their decisions. So it's easier for them to build coalitions. So once in office, they're much more likely to, um, to build coalitions in order to pass policy. When it comes to actually uh, putting issues on the agenda, they're much more likely to put women's issues or what have been called women's issues on the agenda. Of course, women's issues are really family issues, um, education, health care, these sorts of things. So they're more likely to, um, to propose bills and vote for legislation um, that involves those issues. And lastly, uh, a recent study found that women are more likely to look at systemic or institutional causes of societal problems um, rather than individual, uh, rather than focusing on the individual. So, for example, when it comes to issues of crime or poverty, women are more likely to look at systems that cause those things, whereas male legislators are more likely to look at individuals um, who are poor or engaging in criminal activity. So in that sense, um, it would appear that women, at least pre preliminary studies show, uh, that female legislators um, likely propose better long-term solutions because they're looking at the problem in a bigger way. Uh, Mayor Driscoll, do you think um, that, have you seen um, uh, a perceived difference in the way you approach um, ex being an executive sure. in a, a reasonably big city than your predecessors who were all male? I certainly think there's a lot more consensus building that goes on um, by women in many positions. And I see a real attention to solving the problem. You know, let's throw out who gets credit and let's throw out, um, you know, all the folks that, um, you know, have concerns one way or the other, but let's solve the problem. And I don't think anybody epitomizes that better than the Senate President, who you don't see in the headlines, but you know is back there working hard on these issues, playing a major role, not ducking the leadership opportunities, not saying I don't, you know, I don't want to take a position but looking to try and find ways to solve problems. And I think generally, that, that happens to be the approach that I tend to follow as well. I think generally you see that with women as well. Consensus building, trying to get there, not afraid to then you know, lay down the gauntlet and take a position and support it and back it up by doing your homework, all of the above. But then also wanting to solve the problem and not necessarily wanting to beat your chest, <laughs> um, but to actually at the end of the day have a victory, not for you, but for the issue that you're working on. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law, the leader of reform in legal education and a leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu.